Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7 of the Undiscovered Games video podcast, where we take a look at the lesser known board games of the world and share those with you. Now this is a re-upload of episode 7 because I did make a mistake in the end game scoring explanation, so thank you to the user who kindly pointed that out to me, I really do appreciate that, and I just felt like it would be better to make a whole new video and make sure we get this right. So we're going to get it right this time. This game is called Genesis by the great Dr. Reiner Knizia, one of the greatest designers ever in board games. This is one of his lesser known games from way back in 2006 by Face to Face Games. This is a two to four player tile placement area control style game. It's very easy to learn once you see how it works. The rule book is only a one page sheet, but there is some complexity to the gameplay itself, especially the end game scoring. But we're gonna talk about all that today. You're going to be playing as a dinosaur, a lizard, a caveman, or a saber-toothed tiger. That's going to be your character in the game. And there's some sort of prehistoric theme here that doesn't really matter. Basically, you're just trying to get your character to dominate different area types. There's going to be four different colors, and they form different areas on the board to score. It's area control in about 30 to 45 minutes. It's a very elegant and streamlined design where you're trying to group your character together into herds or groups. And each herd is going to score first and second in each separate region. Now this is a great game for new gamers to learn about area control, but it's also great for seasoned gamers to really dive in and explore some subtle and interesting tactical decisions. Now as we open the box, we're gonna find a one page rule sheet in two different languages, and I just love the simplicity of this game. You have chunky wooden scoring markers, not really necessary, but very cool with all the avatars printed on there. And then you have a pair of dice you get to roll on your turn, as well as a bunch of tiles for each player with their symbol on them. Now I brainstormed a pretty neat little storage solution while I was making this video, so stay tuned to the end and see my homemade storage for this game. But first, let's look at the setup for four players. So each player is gonna choose an avatar and then you're gonna take four stacks of tiles with your avatar on them. Remember, you're playing a character and not a color. So make sure you take all the tiles that match your character. You're gonna have four different colors. Now the rule book says there are 13 tiles in each of the colors. However, this is a typo. If you look at the French rules, it says 16 tiles, and that is correct. You're supposed to have 16 tiles of each color with your avatar on each one. So now that you're set up for the game, you take the scoring markers, place those next to the board, and the scoring does not happen till the end of the game, so those are just gonna sit there and look cool while we play. Get the uh, pair of dice there and hand those to the start player, and then you're ready to play the game. But first you need to understand a little bit more about placing tiles on the board. So when you go to place a tile, you can place it anywhere you want on the board that's open. You are not allowed to place on the volcanoes or the tar pits. So anywhere with lava or tar is off limits. This river here just separates the board for two players. So if you're playing with two players, you just play on the board to the left of the river. The rest, if you're playing with three to four, you use the whole board. If there's ever any tiles on the board, you can never cover them up. You must always go on an open spot. But again, you do not have to link to anything. You can go on any open spot all the time. Now at the beginning of your turn, you're gonna roll two dice and these are gonna show the colors of the tiles that you have to put out on the board. So here we rolled blue and red. So we have to put a blue tile, again, anywhere on the board we want that's open, and then a red tile anywhere we want. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I'm limited to my dice roll. Not exactly, because you also have the option, if you don't like what you roll, you can ignore your dice altogether and place one tile of any color out on the board. So you're not getting to place as many, however, it does mitigate that luck a little bit. In addition, each dice um, has a symbol for wild, so that just means you can place anything you want. So if you rolled that, you'd have to place a red, but then you could place one of anything else. In addition to that, let's say all of this stack was already out on the board. So let's pretend my greens are all out on the board, and let's say I roll a green. All of a sudden, my green roll becomes wild. 
Because I no longer have green, I'd place a red one for the red symbol, and then my green is empty so I could place any other color I want for that green roll. So your dice are not as limiting as they first seem. Now let's tackle this all-important end-game scoring. I like to teach scoring first because it really helps with the rest of the game. So as soon as a player places a tile in such a way that there are no longer three open spots touching each other. See how we have three open spots adjacent? As soon as that player goes there, the board no longer has three open spots touching each other and then the game ends immediately. So that's how you know when to end the game and begin scoring. The whole strategy of the game centers around this end game scoring. So once you grasp this, then you can understand how to do well in the game. So you're gonna look at each separate area. An area contains three or more tiles of the same color that are linked. And by linked, I mean touching at an edge and not a corner. So you're gonna look at each separate area and score it individually. Areas with two or one tile, like this green area up here, will not score any points. Now, I think the easiest way to score this is to first determine the overall biggest area. So count the tiles in each separate area and find the biggest one, score that first. Then find the biggest area of each other color and score those. And finally, just finish any remaining areas you did not score yet, as long as they have three or more tiles. This green area up here is the biggest area on the board, so we're gonna score that section first. The payout for the big section is first place gets 12 points, second place gets six points. Second place is always half of what first place is. To determine this, we look for the biggest herd within that area. So this will be a herd of six dinosaurs, which just means a group of the same species in the same color that are touching. So dinosaur gets 12 points for first place, and now we need to score second place by determining the second largest herd. So up here we have a separate herd of dinosaurs that's three large. Here we have a herd of three lizards and a herd of three saber-toothed tigers. So we have a tie for second place. When this happens, you split the points between each herd. Now I will explain how first place ties work, but second place ties, you split the points evenly. So six points, three tied herds, that would be two points to each herd. Now Dinosaur actually gets two more points because they kept these two herds separate. Herds do not link on corners like that. So the Dinosaur player got a share of second place by keeping those separated. Now we score the biggest area of each other color, giving out eight points to first place and four points to second place. So like the biggest red, the biggest yellow, and the biggest blue area on the board all get eight and four points. Let's start with yellow here. Again, we find the biggest herd. We have a herd of four dinosaurs, but right below them, we also have a herd of four saber-toothed tigers, which means we have a tie for first place. And a tie for first place works a little bit differently because we do not score second place. So when there's a tie for first, you add first place points plus second place points and split those. And in this particular area, that's eight points for first plus four points for second, which is 12 points divided by these two herds. So dinosaurs and saber tooths each get 12 divided by two, so six points each. And that's how you do ties for first place. Just remember, if there's a tie for first, there are no second place points, but a tie for second, you just split the points. So let's look at the big red area in the middle here. Here we have a herd of cavemen, and they're gonna win first place with a herd of six. So they're gonna get eight points all to themselves. So caveman gets eight. That's a clean first place victory. Second place, we have another tie. We have a herd of five lizards and a herd of five dinosaurs. So we're gonna split points between two herds. So four, they each get two points each. And again, so important to understand the scoring. Dinosaurs pulling away, but we have a long way to go. Let's do the biggest blue area here. We have another tie for first. We have a herd of four and a herd of four. So again, we add first place points plus second place points and divide them by the tied herds. Here we have two tied herds, eight points plus four points divided by two herds. 
So six points to Lizards and six points to Sabretooth. And once again, we do not score second place because we tied for first. Now before we score the rest, let's do a quick little recap here. We started with the biggest area overall. Then we did the biggest area of each other color. And then the third thing we're going to do now is score the rest of the areas that have at least three tiles in them. And it's basically the same, except now it's four points for first place and two points for second place. And again, every area has to have at least three tiles to score. So this green area and this red area will not score. Now let's look down here in the corner at this herd of three lizards. They're gonna get four and two points because they have the only presence within that scoring area. So you're gonna get first and second place points if you're the only character present in an area. Here we have four plus two, so six points to the lizard. Now we're gonna go up to this yellow area. We have a clear winner with that herd of saber tooth tigers. And then a second place is again the lizard. So four points to saber tooths and two points to the lizards. Now up here in the top corner, we have a herd of three saber tooths in an area all to themselves. So once again, four and two points because they are the only character there. Six points goes to Sabretooths. Now let's look at this red area over here. This has a weird second place situation. Now first place is easy, that's four points to Sabretooth. But when you look at second place, we actually have three herds of one. We have a herd of one lizard here, one lizard here, and then a caveman here. So that's three separate herds of one, all tied for second place. Remember, when we tie for second, we split the points. Two points divided by three herds, and we always round down. That means that's zero points per herd. So nobody's gonna score second place. Now what's funny about this is if the lizard would have had one fewer tile, they would have actually got a point because they would have split those two points between two herds. But by having an extra tile, they made an extra herd and then they lost out on a point. So it's just kind of interesting and you really need to understand how this end game scoring works. Now we just need to score this green area and then we'll be finished. So this is a herd of cavemen here. They get first place. So they're only gonna get four points for this, which is seems like a lot of tiles for only four points. Then you're gonna look at the second place, which is lizards. They're gonna get two points. And again, that's why the size of these areas is so important as you're building them out throughout the game. There's just a lot of subtle, interesting decisions you really have to consider while you're playing. Now I wanna show you another quick scenario here. Let's say that game ended like this. Dinosaurs would still get that first place payout, but now we're gonna to try to determine the second place herd. So here we have a herd of three dinosaurs. We have a herd of three lizards. We have a separate herd of three lizards. And then we have a herd of three saber tooths. but we have two herds of lizards. Now it's important to remember, we treat each herd separately. So one, two, three, four tied herds. Second place points are six. So we take six divided by four tied herds, round that down, that's one point per tied herd one for the dinosaurs, one for the lizards, one more for this herd of lizards, and one for the saber tooth. So lizard actually gets two points out of this, one, two. So if you treat each herd individually, and also for first place scoring the same way, each herd is a separate thing, then that'll help resolve any weird scenarios for resolving ties. Now let's say this blue area was the same size as this blue area, and we could not determine a largest blue area. If there are ever multiple largest areas, you just score four points and two points per second. You treat them like the rest of the scoring areas. You don't score that eight and four points or the 12 and six points for the biggest. So you only do that if there's a tie for the largest area when determining scoring. Now let's do a few sample rounds now that you understand the scoring and you can see how these strategies might evolve here. So we have caveman, they wanna start their own little uh, herd down there in the corner. Then dinosaur is going to, you know what, they're gonna jump right in and go head to head with the caveman there. And they're gonna start their own red area up here somewhere. And then it'll be Sabretooth's turn. They're gonna roll the dice and they're going to 
start their own section up here in green and jump right in and try to block that dinosaur in a little bit. Starting off the game, the board is wide open, but a lot of times it gets pretty cutthroat right off the bat, and I love that. And you gotta be careful not to get caught up in the sort of like wanting to get revenge on someone for coming after you, and then you retaliate, then they retaliate. Because if you get caught up in that, then you lose sight of the long-term goal and you know how building out these areas is actually affecting the scoring. Because, you know, ideally, you want to have the largest herd within an area, but you don't want to have, you know, 10 more tiles in that area than your opponent, you know, between first and second place. Because the, the, the second place is still going to get half of those points. So you want to be efficient with your herds, and you also want to be mindful of how other players might come at you. Like this dinosaur player is going to leave this spot open because the lava blocks it off from branching out. So they're betting nobody else is going to go there. That almost like reserves that spot for their dinosaur herd for a later turn. If they need to make that bigger. The saber tooth player is taking control of a region up here and they're actually going to try to box that in. You know, they have three all to themselves. And they're going to place this green here in hopes of blocking that off and then maybe linking up over to that other green area. But they're hoping, you know, on a later turn, like something like this happens. Now, let's say they place this tile here. They don't want to do that. They want to put it here because then there's only one spot they got to close off. Now, another player could still come in and take that spot and get second place, you know, just by placing one tile. But Sabretooth secures that. If they did this, this whole side remains open and another player could totally take over that blue region. So that's the type of subtle things you gotta think about. Some other decisions you might wanna make are, you know, thinking about how this green area is building over here. So dinosaur rolls a red and a yellow. So they're definitely gonna wanna add to their yellow herd up here to stay in the lead in the yellow area. Now the red piece is interesting. They could just add on to another red piece. Or they could look over here where this caveman has one piece to, to grow up into that green area, and they're just going to block that. Because if the caveman places a green piece there, it basically makes those two dinosaur greens useless. Because that's now one scoring area, and caveman and lizards are easily in the lead on that. So that's a defensive play. It's a waste of a red tile, but it's not really, because now they can build that area out above it. So Sabretooth gets the one they need there. They've closed that three area all to themselves. And that's nice because they only spent three tiles, but they get first and second place points. So again, it's way more than just roll a dice, place a tile. There's a lot of interesting decisions here. For instance, let's say it's Dinosaur's turn and they roll this. Now, looking up here, they want to try to maximize their scoring in this green area up here. So the first thing they're going to do is think about linking up those dinosaurs and make that a bigger area overall. And the second thing they're looking at is this empty space. So if they put a, a dinosaur here in this empty space, it's going to block lizards from making a herd of four. So now lizards cannot make a herd bigger than three. Meanwhile, they're going to come over here and make their own herd of four, and they're going to link this up. So herd of four is the biggest herd and it gets linked up to the now biggest scoring area on the board and no other player can come in and make a bigger herd because there's only three spots left open. So that would be a genius move if Dinosaur thought to do that. And the more you play this, the better you'll get at making decisions like that. And this game is so fun if you can play it with like four equally skilled players that know what they're doing. It's just a blast. Same thing here. You know, Caveman's going to first block off Lizard from being able to expand, and then they're going to expand their herd and take first place and secure it. So many great tactical decisions, and that's why I give this an 8.5 out of 10. Now, I really think of this as more of a filler game. I mean, it's only a 30 to 45 minute game. So if you're having trouble getting people to try this, you know, getting this to the table, market it as a filler game because it's not gonna take you more than 45 minutes. And once people play this, in my experience, they, they wanna jump right back in and try it again because the subtleties of the decisions aren't immediately apparent until you sit down and play. And when you really experience that first end game scoring, 
then you're like, oh, I see what I should have done now. And I want to try that again. Let's play it again real quick. That's been my experience. And you know, I really can't think of another area control game that does what this game does. I mean, you have to worry about your herd size within the size of a certain area and how big you're making that area. You have to worry about the other players' herd sizes, how you could cut them off, how you can leave yourself, you know, some options open for the future. And the more you play this, the more familiar you get with those, those tactics, it's so good and it just gets better. I will say the uh, dinosaur head and the lizard tail sort of blend together at times if you're just glancing across the board. So if anybody's gonna reprint this, just make sure the four avatars are very distinct from each other. And you know, that's just a minor complaint. I really like this game as it is. The color choices are great on the tiles. It's really easy to tell where the sections, you know, begin and end, just glancing onto the board for both playing and for scoring at the end. So that's also very important. If someone were to reprint this, make sure those colors are very distinct from each other. So Genesis, high marks for me, definitely something I think that you should check out, especially if you like area control. Now before I completely lose my voice, I wanna quickly show you this little storage solution I came up with. The game has an extra tile of each character. So I just put a little piece of masking tape on the back of that and use these little food storage containers to keep each tile separate. That way, when you set up the game, you can just hand each player, you know, their appropriate character and tiles, and that's gonna make setup a breeze. And I'm really excited to use this because I just thought of this while I was making this video. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in the box. You just have to ditch the insert that comes with the game. So I just thought I would share that idea with you in case you do get this game or if you have this game, it will make setup a lot more efficient. So I'm gonna end the video there. As you can tell, my voice is about to give out completely and I apologize for the scratchy voice. I just wanted to fight through this episode to get another undiscovered game out there on your radar. As always, thank you so much for joining us on the Undiscovered Games video podcast. If you want to help the channel, you can click subscribe and share this video with your friends. There's also a donate link in the description if you wish to support us. Any proceeds go toward making more videos like this and just better quality content in the future. We really have a passion for finding these undiscovered games and sharing them with you. Also, we have an Instagram page if you're not familiar with that. Go give us a follow on the IG. We are at undiscovered underscore games. We post a lot of cool pictures and written reviews over there as well. So thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one.